And today we're going to talk about stress on the spine, how you load the spine and how you deload the spine. We're going to talk about positions that you can be in that add stress and positions that take away stress from the spine. Then we'll also talk about what it looks like when you're actually picking up objects and loading the spine and what you can do to prevent having that excess stress on your spine when loading it itself. Mark, he's going to be our like, little uh, model here first and we're going to talk about what the load on the spine looks like and how gravity plays a role in that. Gravity is a strong key to putting stress on your body itself in the lumbar spine. And in the same position, naturally we have what we call a line of gravity. That line of gravity runs kind of anterior to the vertebrae of the spine itself. So naturally, gravity itself pulls you forward. What keeps you upright is that, that strength through the upper back muscles, paraspinal muscles, it keeps your body in that nice partial position. So partial strength is a strong component in preventing that tensile strength stress on the lumbar spine. A uh, position that you can be in to like limit the uh, stress on your spine, we're going to demonstrate that first being on the table. So Mark's going to lay flat on his back and he's going to have his knees bent. So with his knees bent, that's going to take a lot of load off the spine. So if he takes his leg out straight, that increases the load on the spine because he's having a longer lever arm of resistance from his feet to his spine. With his knees bent, that decreases the, the lever arm of tension on the spine itself. From there, if we go to a standing position, that would be like your third position of less amount of tension on the spine, standing up nice, tall, and straight. Okay. Like so. Right. Going from there to a seated position. So sitting naturally increases a load on the spine. Uh, ideally, you want to have support uh, for your back itself and also being in an upright position. Now, if you take yourself forward, leaning forward, like leaning over a desk or typing or on a laptop, that's gonna add more stress to the lumbar spine itself. Okay, so naturally you wanna be in an upright position. If you lean forward, that's gonna cause more stress. You have bad posture, trunk caving in, so forth. That's gonna add more stress to the lumbar spine. Then going up to a standing position. So Mark is gonna bend forward, but he's gonna keep his back straight that also adds stress to the spine, but not as much stress to the spine as if he was just gonna like slump over. That's a lot of stress on the spine, probably the max resistance that you're gonna be putting on the spine without loading the body. Now we're gonna be talking about how we can, um, you know, properly lift things, right? Heavy objects. Now you have to remember, you, we use our back for everything, right? Every little things that we do, standing, sitting, you'll be surprised how much that we use our back. So it's very critical that we do the things that uh, that, that are important, right? Body mechanics, proper lifting to protect to protect our back. So right now we are, we are going to demonstrate how you can do some proper lifting. We're going to talk about how much pressure uh, weights can actually put on your back, and uh, and then we'll kind of go over, show you do some demonstration, and kind of show you exactly proper way of doing things. The way the spine is is constructed, you have like two different sections. You have the cervical, the thoracic, and the lumbar, right? And then in between each spine, we have what we call the disc. The disc is more like a cushion. What it does, it sort of like help um, um, cushion the spine. It's kind of like a shock absorber, right? When you walking, when you jump, when you sit, when you lifting things, right? It kind of helps absorb all the pressure mm -hmm. because of that. But if you add too much pressure on that spine, or if you add too much pressure on the disc, what it can do, it's you can you can start dealing with all kind of other issues, right? And it, like disc bulging. Uh, herniated disc and then that's what can cause a lot of back issues. So when you're lifting something It's almost very important that first of all you got to keep the weight close to you because When you're lifting something when you go down Whatever the weight that you're lifting and of course you have to take your body weight into account. Okay, that can Potentially become ten times the amount. Let's say for instance. This is a ten pound ball I'm trying to lift here, right? If I don't use proper body mechanics if I stay so far away and I'm trying to grab the ball that 10 pound ball automatically becomes a good 100 pounds of pressure on my spine. So to avoid the amount of pressure that you put on your spine, it's gonna be very important that you keep the weight close to you as much as possible, okay? So the closer it is to you, the less pressure, the less, and that's how, that's one of the best ways for you to protect your spine, okay? Here is the weight right here, all right? So you keep it close to you, as close as possible, and you lift it and you bring it in, just like that. And same thing when you try to bring the weight back down, okay? All right, so now, let's say for instance, I'm gonna show you a very bad way you can actually lift something. So here, you come to about here, 
Remember, those muscles that we use to lift are the ones in our legs, the thighs, the glute. Those are the big muscles. They're there for lifting. The ones in our lower back, they're more like for pastoral, just like Sherman talked about, right? They're there to protect us, to maintain good posture. They're endurance muscles. They're not there for lifting. But if you start using these muscles like that to lift weight, then that's going to be a problem. If you do it one time, you might be able to get away with it. But you keep doing it two, three times, four times, four, five times a day, eventually you're going to start having back issues. Mm -hmm. Okay? So come back to it. It's going to be very important that we keep the weight close to us. Okay? We don't want that extra pounds of pressure on our spine. Keep it close. Use those muscles, your hip, your back, your glute, and bring the weight up. And then when you're ready to, when you're ready to put the weight down, you pivot. Turn in this way, not ideal. Pivot, go back, and put the weight down. So just as Mark was saying, if the more weight you're picking up, you know, the more load, more load you have on your spine. So with this 10 pound balls, as Mark was demonstrating, if you're picking up a certain way with your, your trunk being in a flex position, you can add up to like around 100 pounds of stress on your lumbar spine. But for us, like if you're actually standing nice and tall and straight, using those paraspinal muscles, locking in that core, pushing the ball straight out from you without that force pulling you over, there's still an increased weight on your spine here itself, um, but it's not as much as, as if you're like bending over, picking it up. Uh, so roughly here, here is just a 10 pound ball. If you're pushing it out away from your body, which is about two feet away from your spine, that's about, you know, an extra, it's more like an extra 10 pounds on your shoulders itself. But for your spine into position, if you're locked up straight, then it's about like three times the weight. If you bend that body over here, that's gonna get increased up to like eight, nine, 10 times the weight on your spine. So again, working those paraspinal muscles, locking in that core, that low back, is gonna take a lot of that stress off. Uh, and just being aware of like what you're lifting when you're exercising. Uh, if you are doing like a, a press out with an object, you wanna make sure your spine your, can handle that press out. Starting off with the light ball, working up with high repetitions and build up to doing you know, heavier weight um, over a course of a time, not just jumping straight into an object that's gonna put that extra stress on your spine without being able to bear that load. All right, just to recap everything we just talked about, we wanna make sure that you're keeping objects close to your body when you're picking them up. If you're at home, if you're at the gym, you wanna just make sure you're protecting your spine in all forms of fashion. As Mark was showing, like if you are gonna pick up, say, a box at your house, and you wanna pick it up, keep it close to your body, pivot your body, put that box down versus rotating to do that. Um, also in the gym setting, again, be aware of the weight that you're actually lifting uh, for your arms your, and your back. And knowing that, you know, if, it, if you push that weight away from your body, it's gonna increase the load, not just on your shoulder, but also your, your trunk itself. And that can also cause you damage if you're not aware of how much resistance you're actually lifting. Um, again, work on building that core strength is always important. Your core itself can add overall strength of your body up, up to 20 to 30% of power. So if you have a weak core, that means you have like weak stability, weak power. So always pay attention to increasing the strength here, along with increasing the strength of your upper back and low back as well. And as well, as, um, as Sherman just mentioned something about core strength. So the core is pretty much, is what's connecting the lower body and the upper body, right? So lower body, very strong. So a lot of times with the power that we have in our lower body, sometimes, you know, if you want to transfer that into like you, you're doing stuff with upper body. Mm -hmm. So technically the power is going to come from your lower body into your core and into your shoulder. Mm -hmm. So having a good, strong core is very vital. It's critical. So you have to pay attention to your core muscles, your core. Sometimes we go to the gym, you know, we worked out our arms, legs, trying to look good and all of that. However, we don't pay attention to our core, right? right? And the core is not just the abdominals, the ones that we see on the outside. Also, we have to think about those deep muscles, right? Those deep muscles that are connecting directly to our spine. And sometimes that's what we do here at Feeling Functional. We try to tend to focus on those very deep muscles and really focus on them, get them strong to stabilize your spine. And that really helps you throughout your day-to-day -day activities.